So today for Tech Tip Tuesday, I thought we'd do something a little bit different. This is a really common question that I get from my tech editing clients. How on earth do I break down this block that I've designed? This is something that I have found just comes with practice. You kind of just need to see a bunch of different ways and see it a bunch of times to kind of develop the knack for it. This is why people are willing to pay for a pattern. You do all the thinking, you figure out the hard part, and all they have to do is follow your pattern. This particular block is just a generic mosaic block. I pulled it out of EQ8, it's not copyrighted or anything like that. Um, but there's a couple of different ways you can make this block, so I figured we'd just kind of talk through those. So this is the block itself. If I kind of tile it across to make a quilt, this is what I get. Um, this particular block makes this really cool secondary pattern, um, which gives you a lot of options when it comes to construction techniques. So let's look at a first option. This is basically just the block as is. I've drawn lines where I think seams could go so that I can figure out a method to construct it. Basically, you would use like a rectangle and do stitch and flip corners in order to make the points there. We do the same with a set of rectangles here um, for the top and bottom kind of vertical points. And then you'd make four HSTs and then sew basically rectangles to either side of that to make your corner segments. And then you can just kind of sew it all together. Sew everything into rows and then sew the rows together into the finished block. If I do it this way. Here's what that would look like when I tile it across the quilt. So I'm getting that kind of plus sign motif, which is what I'm looking for, but you'll notice that in the middle of those green pluses, we're gonna end up with a crap ton of seams coming together there. They're basically split down the middle in both directions. And that's not typically ideal, right? We'd like to keep those pieces of fabric as whole as possible if we can. So this is one way of doing it, it's totally valid. If I did it this way, these are the pieces that I would need. These would be your stitch and flip corners, right? rectangles in the corners, HSTs, and then my plus sign. It's 23 pieces total, and it's a bunch of different cuts, right? We're not just cutting a crap ton of squares of one size and then squares of another size. A Little bit more complicated than that, but 23 pieces per block, and we're making a fairly large block. All right, let's look at another option. So this is option two, and you're probably looking at this right now and going, hang on, how on earth did you get those blocks from the initial block that we're trying to construct? So I'll show you. What I noticed is that when I tiled kind of the, my base block across horizontal and vertically, I got this kind of interpenetrating plus sign motif, right? And this is actually one of my kind of like techniques in order to figure out the best way to break a block down. If I change the layout of my quilt, if I go from grid style to on point or, you know, any of the other options out there, does that simplify the block, especially with these secondary designs? And often it does. And in this case, that's absolutely true. Um, this is just an X block. It's a very, very traditional block that comes around, usually around Valentine's Day, because you can make like X's and O's with it. It's super cute. Um, we're going to make this block in basically two different colorways. It's just four squares sewn together, and I've stitched and flipped the corners of those squares, opposite corners on each one, and that creates this kind of X shape. We do it in two different colorways, and you can build up your quilt the exact same pattern, the exact same design by just using an on-point quilt with this very basic block. So if I do that, here's the pieces that you would need. It's 12 pieces per block. You're basically gonna have four large squares that make up the X body and then eight stitch and flip corners for those four squares. Um, we're gonna have to do that in two different colorways, so keep that in mind. Um, but this is really simple cutting, right? It's two different sizes of square. You can just kind of tune out while you're watching TV and knock out all of the cutting for this quilt. It is gonna get monotonous though. It's the same technique over and over again for the entire quilt. Some people get really bored with it. I know I'm one of them, um, but some people also really like that simplicity because it's just something you can keep your hands busy with and that's all you have to worry about. Alrighty, let's look at option number three. So this one's starting to get a little wacky. We've basically cut part of the block out. So basically this is an attempt to keep those green plus signs whole rather than cutting them down the middle like you saw before. You're basically gonna take just rectangles, HSTs like we had before, but now the points of my pink pluses are being formed by QSTs rather than stitch and flip corners. Again, up to you to decide if that's good or not, but this is one way of doing it. Here's what that looks like tiled across. Again, this is gonna be back to our horizontal and vertical grid layout, so very, very simple to sew together. But what you'll notice is that we're missing kind of the green columns on the side and the bottom, right? So that's an added complexity step. You're gonna end up sewing your quilt top together 
and then have this added step of adding like half of a border in order to get the design complete. If you construct your block this way, what you're gonna end up needing is 13 pieces per block. So slightly more than last time, but again, we're doing a little bit bigger block anyways. Um, and it's gonna be different sizes and different shapes of squares and rectangles. So nothing terribly difficult here, but a lot more variety in shape and fabric cuts. So how do you figure out which option is gonna be best? Well, that depends a lot on you. What do you like doing? What do you dislike doing? And also, what do your customers like and dislike? Because everybody's gonna be a little bit different. So here are the, some of the things that I consider when I'm trying to figure out the best construction method. The first is the number of cuts. Most quilters as a rule just don't really love cutting. It might be fun for the first five minutes, but they tend to get bored of it really quick. So if you can kind of minimize the amount of cuts you have to make, probably a better option, but it's not the be all end all, right? So what I've done here is that each of these blocks kind of cover a different area of the design. So it's not enough to just look at like how many pieces per block. You kind of have to normalize that. So what I've done is just calculate basically the number of pieces you would need for equivalent sizes. And what we see is that for option one, you need 92. For option two, you need 84. Option threes, even better yet, it's only 61 pieces, but at the same time, we're gonna have to deal with that kind of half border thing going on, which brings me to the next thing that I think about, which is the difficulty of assembly. So option three is obviously gonna be trickier to assemble than any of the other options. In general, grid style layouts tend to be easier unless you've got kind of this situation where you're doing something really wonky. On point layouts tend to be more difficult than grid layouts. They're still not difficult, but it is something to consider, especially if you gear your patterns more towards beginners. The third thing that I kind of consider are techniques that I hate. If there's a particular technique that I just really don't like doing, like some people really hate HSTs, don't pick a construction option that's gonna require you to use that technique. Because if you hate it, you're not gonna enjoy making your cover quilt and then it's gonna be harder for you to promote it and be really super excited about your pattern. And that's gonna to translate to your customers, right? If you hate it, they're gonna hate it too. So don't pick construction methods with a technique you hate. Just avoid it, pick something else. The last thing that I like to think about is something a little bit trickier to kind of conceptualize, but I'll explain what I mean here in a minute. And that's the number of seams that I've gotta be careful of alignment on. So certain things, are easier to get aligned than others. It's just a fact of the matter, right? Things that tend to be really, really difficult are things like areas where you kind of got points that just kiss, they don't overlap at all. So one of those areas would be, for instance, on this block, if I put another block right next to it, I'm gonna have to sew a seam where those points just come together. We don't want them overlapping and they don't want a gap either because that kind of ruins the motif that you're going for. So you've gotta be really precise with that alignment there and we're gonna have to do it with every single seam where I join a block together. Versus option three, I take care of those points when I do my QSTs. QSTs are easier to align for most people than when you're sewing big blocks together. So this is gonna give you a better chance at getting decent alignment than this option. So just things to think about as you're constructing this method, try to avoid methods that are gonna require you to make a bunch of really tough long seams that all have to get aligned appropriately in order to keep the design looking good. So as for me and these options, I think I would definitely be going with option two here. Yes, it's an on point layout, but it's a fairly simple one, not too difficult. We've got moderate number of pieces, but they're easy pieces to cut. It's basically just two different sizes and it's one technique, which means that this pattern is gonna be a breeze to write. It's gonna be super short and easy to follow for my customers. And on top of that, a lot of customers quilt because they want something to just do with their hands. They don't wanna to think too hard about it. And so something that just is very, very repetitive and monotonous can be really good. That's all I got today. I hope that's helpful. If you found it helpful, make sure you like and subscribe. But also I'm gonna put a little Google form in the description. If you have a block that you're having trouble figuring out how to construct, I would love for you to share it with me and we'll kind of walk through it together because I'm sure everybody can learn something from it, including me. All right, see you later.